Lloyd, let's talk a, a little bit of footy and obviously your old club, Essendon, has been at the forefront of the new cycle in recent weeks. On, on first look, what did you make of the Essendon review and uh, particularly the lines and paragraphs around this team not being up to it fitness-wise and not being at a, uh, not having been developed in a satisfactory manner? Oh, alarming, yeah, that, that's probably the word I'd use in how an AFL football club and program could have players not being fit, um, you know, and then the lack of development, you know, it's interesting that they're going to up it for us from two, two and a half to five and a half people or something, so an extra three people in development. Yeah, I think that it's amazing how players have gone backwards and the lack of all Australian players and, and, and across the journey, like the last, you know, 10 years probably mm. at the Bombers, you might have had Zach Merritt, Tarsi Parrish, um, you know, maybe Hurley once potentially, but there hasn't been much in that regards and then not playing finals or winning finals football. So, yeah, it wasn't good. You could see the what happens, Shane. And one of the reasons I haven't gone back really into AFL football was I saw my last couple of years at AFL level, the blame game starts yep. and the politics that get involved in, in AFL football when things aren't going well. Everyone tries to start protecting their own job and you can see even the different areas of the Essendon Football Club that haven't been functioning where they're just not even in talking terms and but the blame game starts and everyone gets threatened by their job and that's not what good and strong clubs do. And, and, and that, unfortunately, for Essendon, is the great indictment on the club yeah. at the moment that since your time mm. at the club, there has been this constant kind of arguing, of course, the, the drug saga and the like, but this back and forward arguing and who's to blame. And hopefully this review can maybe put some of that to rest. So hopefully... Brad Scott does have the fresh air that he deserves and in particular needs to take this group forward along with that development group mm. coming in that will work under Josh Marnie. Yeah, I thought the clean out was needed uh, and now it's about getting stability. So, yeah, it was, it was obviously embarrassing what happened with Andrew Thorburn. Mm. Uh, I think Brad Scott's a great appointment. Um, yeah, I think Andrew Welsh will be great for the board. Uh, and then I think it's about, um, yeah, whether there's a change from a leadership perspective. I think they're probably the players have got away with a fair bit. They've been let down by their club with, you know, the lack of development, the, the amount of changes in coaches, the amount of change in head of football at the club. That doesn't help the players one bit whatsoever. I remember Tim Watson once made a comment, the fish rots at the head. Yep. And that's what's been an issue because it filters down to the players because of the lack of stability and that's what – they're crying out for they, they want to be coached hard and I think you can see the standards have been so low that players at AFL level haven't been fit enough. It's interesting what you say about Andrew Thorburn obviously mm. that never eventuated so now Essendon looks to who's going to take the CEO role Simon Matthews uh, basically the head of marketing at, at Richmond had been strongly linked to the role the other one and Caro had raised this previously with regard to Travis Ault mm. coming from the AFL, right-hand man to Gillan McLaughlin. It was suggested again in the Herald Sun today. Uh, he certainly was uh, amongst uh, a handful to be in the running to replace mm. Gillan, along with Andrew Dillon at AFL House. But you wonder if the AFL uh, if the AFL job's not going to be his, then does he look to a job in club land? And obviously Essendon would be a suitable contender. Well, Trav was there when I was there and his role was he was under Peter Jackson as number two. So he's been and gone probably – that's probably 20 years ago. So he's had a lot of experience. Yeah, he went to the Gold Coast Gold to be Coast there as well. CEO. And he's very senior uh, at the AFL the, on the executive. So, yeah, he, he'd be a wonderful appointment. But I would love to see a, a, a good, strong football person uh, take on this job. And that's where the Thorburn one did surprise me when it was first raised. As good as your background can be – Elsewhere, that doesn't mean you understand the the, uh, you know, the, the football elements. Put the religious elements yeah. to the side. Mm. The the fact that they will just have someone with football mm. now. You don't need a big four CEO. You don't need a Fortune 500 CEO. Mm. You need someone who knows bloody football. Uh, it's, mm. it's quite a simple thing at the end of the day. And I think, yeah, they, they got that wrong. But either Travis Ald or uh, Simon Matthews, I think, would be yeah mm. terrific a appointments if they asked you to come down and work with someone like Sam Wiedemann? Would you be up for it? Uh, no, Shane, I, I tried it with Joey and uh, and it just was a hard, a long, hard year. For, for, for Even for Joey to, he's having a shot for goal and there I am flashed in the 3W commentary box yep. and and I'd go on footy classified and I'd say things about a team and then I could feel, I could see there's people who didn't like what I had to say about them on the wing. So I, don't, I didn't need that. Uh, my job is to, my number one job is to the media. So I've 
I've always shied away from that. I'd go to a park and have a one-off kick with yeah. anybody, but that's not going to take them too far. So take the step back. What did you think of getting Sam Wiedemann across? Obviously, wasn't getting the opportunities mm. at Melbourne that he would like, and clearly Essendon wants some support up forward alongside Peter Wright. I think the issue, like Wiedemann was a very strong junior, but then it's making the cut to then AFL football is a different story. And uh, the, the, the plight that Essendon's in, Shane, that they were never going to get a, a big fish because why would you come when there's the lack of stability at Fair the club question. versus Geelong who've got everyone falling over themselves to get there, Richmond, great club, players trying to get there, Brisbane have really built themselves despite the Chris Fagan situation. Uh, Dunkley and, and, and Gunston go there. So Setterfield and, and um, Wiedemann, I, I think they if they could be a Peter – Peter Wright's come out of the box and kicked 53 and won a best and fairest. But for every guy you, you don't give a lot, up a lot for, doesn't probably go on and do things like that. So I'm not expecting a heap, but uh, they'll be good, strong depth players. For you need club. a little bit of luck of you do. as well when you you're do. playing the trade game. Uh, Ross Lyon, mm. back at St Kilda, your footy classified colleague. Given what had happened with Carlton, given what had happened with Essendon where he didn't feel the vibe, did you still always get the impression that he had that urge to go back into coaching? The way he'd never rule it out for any of the jobs said to me that uh, I think if the right fit came, he would come, but he didn't really want to go through the process mm. for any of these clubs. So... Uh, I think St Kilda came along and, and they were, it was pretty much Ross or, okay, if we don't get Ross, have we got a plan B? I'm not sure they actually had one. Uh, Doesn't seem like No, it. they. I'm sure they knew Ross was going to come before they sacked Brett Ratton. Um, so, so yeah, they had their man and, and my understanding is he's been at the club the last three or four days or the last week having some really hard conversations with players and staff. Uh, and there's change the foot. So, no, I, I think he's a very driven man. Um, you know, jury's out how he will go with St Kilda. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting that they felt Brett, Brett wasn't hard enough and they've gone for a man who is very hard in his convictions. Hard in his convictions, which he was in yeah. St Kilda Phase 1 and, of course, at, at, at Fremantle. But there's a lot of rhetoric that the media changed him during his time at Footy Classified and in radio. Did you see a, a softer side to Ross than maybe you saw on, on TV and that you were critical of as a, as a coach? Yeah, yeah I think that um, I saw Ross and he was just as relaxed as you could be. Yeah, But he's doing a TV show for one hour a week where there's not the pressure of coaching an AFL football side. So the challenge for Ross is going to be when he loses four or five games in a row, can he still go in with the way he wants to be and be different to what he was the first time and maybe not as hard on people, staff, as he was, uh, those types of aspects. But um, that's always a challenge for a coach. Young coaches in particular, I saw see good young assistants or assistants get a job, they get the pressure. You're not just coaching 44 players. You're, you're in charge of fitness departments. You're in charge of dealing with the media. You've got to sell your football club. And we see so many high credentialed assistants fail fail miserably once they get the top job. He's obviously very comfortable in his own skin this time around. One player that he'll be looking for a big year from is Max King. Yeah. You've just said, look, you know, the, the, the coaching yeah. of a player, not not for you. But for someone of Max King's ilk and someone who you did coach at a, at a junior level, what does he do over the preseason? Because there were games last year where he stood out, round 10 against Adelaide, six straight, round 23 against Sydney, five straight, but then he'd have matches of 1-7, 2-5 and 0-5. I mean, they were completely different ends of the spectrum. And obviously as a goal kicker, you'd prefer it to be at one end and not the other. Mm. That just shows, Shane, um, how it's it's mental. Uh, it's a lot because you can't kick six straight and – what was the other one he kicked? Uh, you know? Six straight and five straight. So that's yeah. 11 straight in two games. It shows his, his technique isn't horrendous, but mentally, if he – when I was young, if I missed my first goal, shot for goal, I'd go, gee, I hope I kick my next one. Gee, I hope I don't miss. The man on the shoulder just jumps on and says, you wouldn't want to miss this, and you're listening to all the outside noise, the crowd – but after 100 games and having a, a routine that I worked on really hard, I'd be able to fall back and go, okay, what did I get wrong in that first kick? 
and I'll just adjust and I would coach myself on the run. He's got to get to that point, but has he got the right people around him? I can't answer that. So, so do you think it is easier, and, and this is just yeah. goal kicking, as a goal kicker to overcome kind of the, the mental side of it as opposed to it being a technique problem? Yeah. I didn't have a great technique, like, but I was able to coach myself and, and coach the brain to be able to handle situations through a lot of repetition and routine. Um, it, that's, that's Max's big challenge because what you can do, like he kicked six straight in his last game. Yeah, or uh, five straight five in that, straight. that game against Sydney. So he might walk away and go, yeah, what, I'm, I'm okay. I'm not too bad. But then the issues keep coming up year after year after year. I, I worked with a sports psychologist as well as a technician. Mm. The two went hand in hand. I was being challenged by the the psych on my mental aspect and the technician, your know, vision, filming me every kicks. I'm not sure Max has gone to that length to this point. Let me ask you this: We've spoken about two clubs, Essendon and St Kilda. Both have had significant changes during the off season. Which one are you more boyish about going into 2023? Uh, the future, Essendon, with the list that they've got. Uh, I think St Kilda may well finish higher next year, mm. but I think Essendon. Uh, have a better list in my opinion.